Hello there you guys, welcome to another of my live videos and today I'm just going to be officially um, updating you on some more current um, latest news if you do consider drop your likes and if you do consider a subscriber to the channel um, as always. So the big question is uh, who are Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's uh, surprise, signings, uh, surprise signings so we will uh, delve uh, straight into it so potentially Ole Gunnar Solskjaer said um, in his press conference uh, yesterday you know uh, you will be surprised um, how many agents um, have contacted me uh, saying that their uh, players uh, want to uh, come uh, to Manchester United so basically Ole Gunnar Solskjaer still believes uh, we can attract uh, players uh, to the highest level, um, even though even if we're not in Champions League uh, football uh, for next season. So this is what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know, does believe. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, insists that he will um, have his uh, final say um, and our summer uh, transfer plans, you know, what players come in and what players uh, leave uh, Manchester United um, in the summer. Um, obviously, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is looking to bring um, at least five new additions uh, to Manchester United this summer. That could cost, like, quite frankly, over £200 million. Reportedly, he's getting a spending spree of around £250 million this summer. We do know the club are still looking uh, to hire a director of football in you know, to change the structure of the club and obviously Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to need back in this summer and obviously there's been quite a few candidate names mentioned but obviously you know want to put, appoint a director of football in you know before uh, the start um, of next season because obviously you know Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to need back in this summer but as I said he wants to bring at least five new additions into the club we are expected to orchestrate a big summer clear out I think up to at least uh, five or six players you know could depart uh, Manchester United uh, this summer but you know most recently you know we have been in a bad vein of form you know we've only won two of our last ten games I mean, all competition, so it's just seemed to have all gone wrong since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's got the job permanently. Because reflecting back in his first three months, you know, when he was interim manager, you know, the results were good, the performances were good, he was getting the best out of these group um, of players, and you know, he exceeded um, expectations. Um, did Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? So it's just seemed to have all gone wrong since he's got the job permanently. Is it something to do with a different level of sort of pressure? I do not know, but I still believe at this moment in time, you know, I'm still believe that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer can elevate this club forward. You know, I've got a few Manchester, I have heard um, a few Manchester United fans, you know, uh, being on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's back. You you know, but we can't just keep sacking managers, you know, because we haven't got the structure, you know, to uh, constantly, you know, sack managers because uh, Fer since Ferguson retired, you know, we sat Moyes, we sat Van Gaal, you know, we sat Jose Mourinho, so we haven't got the structure, you know, to keep uh, sacking our managers. And we do know since Alex Ferguson, you know, uh, retired from Manchester United, um, obviously we do know a lot of money um, has been spent at Manchester United, like 700 odd million pounds. You know, we've had different managers with different philosophies. We've been playing catch up for the last uh, five or um, six years. So Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is still in the process of um, rebuilding this Manchester United team because none of this squad is Ole and Solskjaer because he's inheriting 11 of Jose Mourinho's players you know there's still some players here from Van Gaal there's Matt here from the David Moyes era and there's still about 4 or 5 players here from the um, Alex uh, Ferguson um, Ray Ray so Ole Gunnar Solskjaer he's still in the process um, of rebuilding uh, this Manchester United team so reportedly he's going to get a spending speed of around £250 million this summer but I still believe he can take us forward Ole Gunnar Solskjaer as I did say to you on one of my previous videos is that we're still at least 3 or 4 years off from being that competitive elite level football club as we was under Alex Ferguson and I do believe uh, maybe still in the next couple of years you know our aspirations um, is going to be you know getting them um, into that top four but it's going to be difficult for us to get the players uh, who we want to it's going to be difficult for us to get the players who we want in the summer considering that it's unlikely that we're going to be in Champions League football for next season but Ole Gunnar Solskjaer still believe you know we can attract players to the elite level because he basically said um, in his press conference you know um, he basically said in his press conference you know he claims that um, he has uh, been um uh, he has been contacted uh, by a number of agents, you know, offering their players to Manchester United. So basically, he said, um, he, he, you know, surprised, he, he's surprised um, how many, how many um, agents um, have contacted him, saying that they do uh, want to uh, come uh, to Manchester United. So this is what basically, you know, um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, had basically um, said. So potentially, they did say, you know, the t uh, targets Manchester United have been interesting. But who are these surprise signings of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? You know, I hope one of them um, is not potentially, you know, Gareth Bale, because, you know, there has been um, a lot of talks um, about Gareth Bale, um, as we all know, and he's been linked with a move to Manchester United, you know, since uh, the David Moyes era, you know, some people say, you know, it, it would be good for Gareth Bale to come to Manchester United. I don't want Bale at Manchester United. You know, he's on the decline. He's aging up. He's 29 years of age, and we do know that Real Madrid no longer want him. I think Bale um, is interested um, in making him um, a return uh, to the Premier League, but Real Madrid, I think, you know, paid around 85 million pounds from, from Tottenham back in 2013, and obviously, you know, the majority of his silverware he has won him um, has obviously, you know, become at Real Madrid. So this is now um, his sixth season with Real Madrid. Um, his Bale's plus um, his injury prone um, as well. So I wouldn't want him um, at Manchester United. You know, Gareth. Bale. But who are these surprise signs? And uh, you know, recent reports um, a bit and Gareth Bale's injury prone, so I wouldn't want him as well. But uh, who are these surprise signings? You know, uh, there was a lot of talks uh, going out uh, yesterday, guys, um, in the media um, about uh, Musa Dembele. You know, from Leon, it did reportedly say that Manchester United um, have stepped up their interest in Musa Dembele. He's only very, very young. He's 22 years of age, and it's good that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is emphasising interest um, in quite a few young upcoming uh, players because we have got quite a lot of um, experienced and ageing up players. So he's looking to bring uh, quite a few youngsters in. Um, his Solskjaer. Musa 
Moussa Dembele um, is a forward, but reports were saying yes, yesterday Manchester United um, have opened up negotiations with Leon um, over the summer move of Moussa Dembele. It also said that the likes of Arsenal were interested. It also said Atletico Madrid were interested. I think Arsenal have instructed scouts, you know, to keep um, a close eye out uh, on Moussa Dembele, you know, reflecting on his impressive performances uh, this season for Leon. I think he scored 14 goals uh, this season uh, for Leon um, as Moussa Dembele. It is only his first season um, in France with Leon because Leon uh, got him uh, last summer for just under, was it, £20 million pounds, uh, from Celtic. Celtic uh, last summer, where he did um, have two good uh, years uh, with Celtic, you know, did uh, Moussa Dembele. He actually began his uh, senior career with Fulham, you know, when he was uh, a lot younger. But last year, uh, last uh, last summer, um, he signed uh, a five-year deal with Leon, so he's under contract uh, with Leon till 2023. Reportedly, um, he's valued um, at around £43 million, pounds, is it? So reportedly, you not know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is interested in recommending, you know, Moussa Dembele uh, to come in. But potentially, you know, um, he is a forward, he can score goals, he can provide, and he's proven himself this season fantastically well uh, with Leon. Um, uh, potentially uh, Manchester United you know, would identify him um, as a replacement uh, for Romelu Lukaku and obviously you know, if Lukaku is to leave Manchester United this summer obviously you know, we're going to need um, a replacement for Romelu Lukaku because obviously the likes of Martial and Rashford uh, obviously you know, haven't graduated to that level yet and obviously you know, they're not reliable enough you know, to get us them goals uh, to get Manchester United or them uh, goals uh, we need because Rashford's been in a bad vein of form you know, Martial's been um, in a bad vein of form even though Martial signed a new long-term contract with the club you know, he has been um, uh, in a bad vein of form but Talking about Romelu Lukaku, now he's attracting interest from the likes of Juventus and Inter Milan. And I think if Manchester United you know, are willing to sanction him off this summer, you know it would help us uh, with our transition. I think from Lukaku's preference is considering leaving this summer. He has sustained a few injuries this season. You know he's just easily uh, sustained um, a hamstring injury as Romelu Lukaku, and you know potentially for me he's not reliable enough. You know doesn't really get enough them runs in behind. You know he's finishing lets him down. He has got a good pedigree in the Premier League um, as Lukaku, and he can score goals and he's well Premier League proven. But for me he hasn't got the capabilities you know to play to the highest level because when it comes to to Lukaku, you know, playing against the big teams, you know, um, he's um, a big game bottler. And Manchester United paid £75 million pounds, plus £15 million in add ons, which had risen it to £90 million. Pounds. He's still got three years left on his contract and he's on about £250,000 a week. And, you know, we did pay big money for Lukaku, you know, we paid, we paid big money for Pogba, we paid £89 million for Pogba. So maybe some people are saying, you know, we should be sensible with our recruitment this summer because there's quite a few players um, out there uh, for a reasonable figure. Uh, so maybe we should be uh, sensible uh, with our recruitment this summer, but we've got to get the right recruitment this summer because analysing it, you know, our recruitment policy um, is very, very um, poor um, indeed. But Romelu Lukaku, um, yeah, Manchester United paid 75 million, you know, plus 15 million add-ons. He enjoyed a very, very difficult second season with Manchester United, but in his first season, you know, he did very, very well. You know, he scored 27 goals um, in all competitions. So if Lukaku is to leave, obviously, you know, we're going to um, need um, a replacement for him. So I think from his own preference, you know, he would uh, indicate that he, he, he wants to make the move uh, to Juventus if Manchester United, of course, get rid of him uh, this summer. But we're going to need a replacement for him if he leaves. And do you think, you know, Moussa Dembele, you know, would be the right solution. He's proven himself in France very, very well this season. He proved himself um, in Scotland in his couple of years uh, with Celtic as well. So, you know, do you think Moussa Dembele you know, uh, would be uh, the right solution? So, Manchester United have been in talks uh, with Leon um, over a summer move. And also, you know, obviously there's been a lot of news uh, circulating um, around the media as well um, in the last couple of months. You know, there has been a lot of narratives going on, you know, about um, Mario Cardi and Romelu Lukaku um, as a potential swap deal. So there has been a lot of talks about that going on. Uh, a lot of this, uh, you know, news, you know, does stem from the Italian journalist, you know, uh, Demazio, who, to be quite fair, is a very, very respectful re respectful journalist, very reliable journalist, especially um, in relation to Manchester United and when it does uh, come uh, down uh, to transfer. So there has been a lot of talks of Icardi and Romelu Lukaku um, as a potential swap deal. I do really really like Mario Cardi you know he can score goals he can provide he can create chances don't get me wrong I've got some reservations about him you know when it comes to his defensive contribution you know some of his touches are concerned me but but the but uh, the question is um as <coughs> what was that oh sorry about that someone shouting but yeah, um, I think, you know, as the likes of Mario Cardi, you know, got the capabilities, you know, to produce and, the, you know, produce and deliver, you know, the same element of the performances, you know, that he's be, he has been doing in Italy with Inter Milan all these years. Uh, can he do the same um, in the Premier League? So can he come to the Premier League and replicate um, his form, you know, what he has been doing um, in Italy um, all these years, um, Mario Cardi? But Mario Cardi is 26 years of age, um, he's Argentinian, you know, he has still got a lot of years um, ahead of him um, as Mario Cardi. I think he's got a release cause um, of around £100 million. I think he's, enjo he's enjoyed a difficult uh, time this season with Inter Milan. Milan. I think um, he lost uh, the captain Zamba, but Inter Milan want to get rid of him, and Inter Milan are emphasising a couple of targets. You know that could replace uh, Mario Icardi, so it would be good for him, you know, to come and experience the Premier League. Obviously, the majority um, of his goals um, has obviously, obviously, you know, come at Inter Milan. I think he scored like over 100 odd goals um, in Inter Milan. He's Inter Milan's uh, ninth highest top uh, goal scorer um, of all time. But a lot of this, you know, came out uh, from Demazio. So Demazio believes that Manchester United could swap Lukaku for Mario Icardi uh, this summer. And I think Demazio is convinced that uh, you know. Um, 
you know, uh, Mario Icardi, you know, uh, will not continue uh, Inter Milan uh, next summer. So possibly, you know, Icardi, you know, could be uh, leaving um, Inter Milan uh, this summer. But I do really, really like Icardi. I think he'd bring us them goals, you know, to be quite honest. You know, he can lead the lines very, very well. And I think he'd bring that firepower for us uh, with Mario Icardi. So for me, he would be uh, the right solution, even though I have got a couple of reservations um, about him. So if Lukaku is to leave, obviously, you know, we're going to um, need um, a replacement for him um, as well. Obviously, you know, we do know the club's number one priority target um, is obviously, you know, Borussia Dortmund's Jadon Sancho. Now, um, um, I think it may, it's going to be difficult for us to get Jadon Sancho considering that we're not going to be in Champions League uh, football uh, for next season. Uh, I do really, really like Jadon Sancho. You know, I, I, I'd love to get a, a player of Jadon Sancho's quality, you know, because he's been fantastic in his couple of seasons with Borussia Dortmund. And I think if he was to make a return to the Premier League, you know, it would create a better platform for Jadon Sancho because he did have a couple of years with Manchester City, you know, before he went to Borussia Dortmund, but he never got in the first team with Manchester City. And and that's why, you know, he left City and went uh, to Borussia Dortmund. Um, I do really, really like him. As I said, you know, we need someone that can play between the byline, you know, put crosses um, into the box and, you know, Jadon Sancho can do that. And um, um, I think, um, you know, he's going to cost us um, around um, at least um, £100 million. Pounds, um, is Jadon Sancho, as we're all um, aware of. He's going to cost us around um, at least £100 million. Pounds. But as I did say, maybe a player of Jadon Sancho's calibre, you know, wants to be in a Champions League football. But yeah, we've been interesting for quite a while. Um, obviously, he's under contract with Borussia Dortmund until 2000. 22. Um, Borussia Dortmund, of course, have been known uh, for doing a business uh, with their players um, in the past. But reports came out about was it three weeks ago? As he updated you on that he's interested um, in making a return uh, to Manchester. Um, is Jadon Sancho? So he's uh, the club's number one priority target. And obviously, all they're going to solve is one of these priorities is, of course, is to recommend a winger to come to Manchester United. And I think he'd blend in very, very well. I think he, you know, he'd, he'd, he'd uh, link up very, very well with the likes of Rashford and Martial. And uh, I think he could bring us them goals. He can also provide as well can Jadon Sancho, as he's proven um, in his couple of seasons uh, with Borussia Dortmund so he's still uh, the club's uh, number one power target and only 19 years of age and you know he's still uh, got um, a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him um, as Jadon Sancho but um, as I did come to say, yes, so as I did say, you know, we need um, a, a couple um, of additions um, in that midfield because um, obviously we know Paul, probably Paul Pub is going. Uh, obviously, we know uh, Ander um, Herrera um, is going um, as well. Um, we know Ander Herrera um, is going. Uh, so potentially, you know, we need to emphasize a couple of targets, you know, that could replace Ander Herrera and that could uh, replace uh, Paul Pub at um, Manchester United. And we have showed um, an interest um, in quite um, a few uh, midfielders. Uh, we do know, the, 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 was it yesterday or the day before, there's been a lot of talks um, about Bruno Fernandes from Sporting Lisbon and Joe. Felix uh, from Benfica and reports are coming out saying that Manchester United and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer want to wrap up deals for Bruno Fernandes and Joel Felix and it reportedly said it could cost us um, up to around £150 million pounds. but they are very very good players and I really really like Bruno Fernandes, he's predominantly an attacking midfielder, um, you would actually see him um, as a replacement uh, for Paul Pogba uh, Bruno Fernandes I think City are also interested in me, also mentioned that AC Milan were interested um, in Bruno Fernandes uh, Bruno Fernandes is 24, as I said he's still got a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him, he can score goals he can provide as well, I think he's got a release cause of um, around £90 million pounds in his deal with Sporting Lisbon. I think he's been at Sporting Lisbon now um, a couple of seasons um, as Bruno uh, Fernandes because um, uh, he actually you know, used to play for San Pandora and underneath you know, when he was younger so when he was young he had a lot of experience um, playing in Italy You know, did Bruno Fernandes but I think he'd blend in very very well in our midfield and I think we need you know, we need someone, we need creativeness in that midfield You know, someone that can pose a goal threat, score goals and provide you know, you know, Bruno Fernandes um, is capable um, of that so um, yeah Manchester United um, have been linked to him Obviously, reports are coming out from Portugal saying that Manchester United have been in negotiations with his representatives um, over the summer move. Uh, Joe Felix, you know, there's been a lot of news circulating um, in the last couple of months that Manchester United have been linked to with Joe Felix from Benfica. I do really, really like him um, as well. He's pr primarily an attacking midfielder, but he's also been used as a winner. He's also been used as a striker and a second striker. So, uh, you know, Joe Felix um, is versatile. Um, it is only his uh, first season uh, with Benfica um, in the senior team because he only broke into their senior team uh, last year, did, um, you know, Joe Felix. I think he has got a buyout clause um, of around £100 million, but he always, this player can also score goals, he can provide, and he's only young, you know, he's all, only uh, 19 years of age, um, is Joel Felix, but he did say if we have, if we, if we can get Bruno Fernandes and Joel Felix, the Portuguese duo, it will cost Manchester United um, around £150 million, so we've been interested in them. There has also been a lot of talks um, about, you know, Everton's um, Madrid again. You know, there's still um, a lot of news, you know, circulating around the media um, about that. And, you know, we could um, actually, you know, see um, Adrissa Gay as a potential uh, replacement uh, for Ander Herrera because Adrissa Gay is 29 years of age and Ander Herrera is 29 years of age. And, you know, they are both the same age, but combining them together, you know, you could say Ander Herrera's had better better of the career than um, Adrissa Gay. But I still really, really like um, Adrissa Gay. You know, he's, I think he's mainly defensive midfielder. Um, he can break up the play very, very well. Um, he's a good energetic midfielder. He presses opponents. 
very, very well. He's well Premier League proven. Obviously, the majority of his appearances have obviously not in the Premier League have come at Everton because he's been at Everton a number of years now. Um, I think this is now his third season, is it, Everton? He's also a former Villa player, where I think he only spent one season. Um, Everton paid just over £7 million for him in 2016. Uh, they triggered a release causing a just against contract and paid just over £7 million. And he initially signed a four-year deal, but uh, in February of last year, he got his contract renewed until 2022 uh, with Everton Football Club uh, did address a, uh, did, um, address a gear. And I think the reports were saying that he could be available for a reasonable figure this summer. He could be available for around £25-30 million pounds could address a gear. So do you think if he, if he was to come in, do you think he'd blend in very, very well um, in our midfield um, address a gear? Uh, but I think PSG um, actually you know, um, inquired about getting him in January, uh, but I think Everton wanted around £40 million. Pounds, uh, but I think uh, PSG had like two, was it two bids turned down uh, for address a gear? So we could emphasise him as a potential uh, replacement uh, for Ander Herrera. So there has been um, a lot of talks um, about him. We do know there's been uh, talks um, about De West, West Ham's Declan Rice um, as well, and he's been mentioned quite a lot um, in the media. He's one of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's prime targets, is Declan Rice. Um, he's, again, he's, I think he's predominantly in a, a defensive midfielder, but he can operate as a centre back. He's only 20 years of age, um, he's Declan Rice, so he's one of England's youngest upcoming talents. And his performances this season for West Ham have been very, very impressive indeed um, under Manuel Pellegrini. He's been in the West Ham senior squad, you know, quite a few years now, um, as Declan Rice. Um, quite a few years now, yeah, he's been in West Ham senior squad, you know, quite a few years. Um, he's got a contract with West Ham till 2024 because he actually signed um, a new long-term deal with West Ham uh, back in December um, of last year. But his performances have been really, really good this season. But I think he's available for a reasonable figure. I think West Ham, you know, would demand that they want around £50 million pounds for him this summer if they are willing to do any business. But he's, he's a good defensive midfielder, you know, he holds his line very, very well. Plays between the lines very, very well. Breaks up the play and I've analysed uh, some of his performances. So I think I, we, we would I actually identify him as a good replacement uh, for Nemanja Matic because for me, Nemanja Matic um, isn't good enough for Manchester United. I know he's a, well, he's an experienced you know, midfielder. He's, Premier League, he's well Premier League proven but he's ageing up. I've got strong reservations about him. He's too slow, is Nemanja Matic. So I don't even want him at Manchester United uh, next season you know, to be quite honest. And I think it was a mistake actually. You know, Manchester United you know, bringing Nemanja Matic in even though in some games you know, we have in some games, you know, he has stepped stepped up to the plate and he has proven himself in the Manu Matic. But for me, you know, we've got to get rid of him um, in the summer. And obviously, you know, we need a centre defensive midfielder uh, that's fast um, and tenacious, and that uh, is the most um, essential thing. So, do you think Declan Rice, you know, would fit the bill? Do you think he'd fit the Manchester United agenda? But he has done uh, very, very well uh, with West Ham um, indeed. So there has been um, a lot of talks um, about him going on. So yeah, we're interested in quite a few midfielders and you know, what's going on uh, with Paul Pogba? You know, I think, I presume that Paul Pogba um, is going to be going uh, to Real Madrid uh, this summer. Uh, recent reports have been coming out saying that reportedly uh, Paul Pogba will reportedly have to take um, a pay cut You know, if he's to join Real Madrid this summer as reportedly Real Madrid are not willing to meet um, his £290,000 a week wages they're not willing to match his £290,000 a week £290,000 a week wages so reportedly Paul Pogba uh, will have to uh, take um, a pay cut, pay cut but I think Paul Pogba is intending on you know, leaving Manchester United this summer he's already told uh, he's already notified his Manchester United teammates that he's intending on leaving the club this summer and you know Paul Pogba you know, I think he's built a great relationship Relationship up with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, as Paul Pogba, and you know he's still one of the best midfielders um, in world football. You know when he's playing in when he's playing in the right vein and right manner. And reflecting in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's first three months, you know he was one of our most um, influential players, Paul Pogba. And he did okay in the Chelsea game, but prior to the Chelsea game, in his last six or seven games, you know Paul Pogba's performances um, have been way below par. He hasn't been playing to his potential best, and this just emphasises that he no longer wants to be at the club. And I think he's not playing around uh, around well. He's not playing amongst world class players um, at Manchester United. But I think if we can get rid of Paul. Pogba, you know, again, it will help us uh, with our transition. So, if we can get rid of the likes of Pogba and Lukaku, we did uh, say in the media, we could cash in around £200 million pounds if we can get rid of Pog 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 Paul Pogba and Romelu Lukaku. But Paul Pogba still got over two years left on his deal at Manchester United with an option um, of a further year. I think Manchester United um, have been in negotiations with trying to get him a new contract. Uh, but, he's, <clears throat> as I said, he's got over two years left on his deal with um, an option um, of a further year. There were reports coming out a while back saying that um, Man United are willing to um, offer in the captain's armband, you know, to convince him uh, to stay at the club. But Paul Pogba's been at Manchester United now um, over three years. But Zinedine Zidane um, is a big um, admirer um, of Paul Pogba. But I think Manchester United, you know, don't want to lose him. You know, Solskjaer still insists he will beat Manchester United next season. But um, if Manchester United um, are to get rid of him this summer, we'll demand uh, that we want at least £130 million pounds for Pogba. Obviously, last year, we're linked with the likes of Juventus and Barcelona. I think we're linked to him last year because obviously he had a bad relationship with Jose Mourinho, did Paul Pogba. And when Jose Mourinho left, Paul Pogba, of course, uh, got one of um, his best wishes. But there's still news circulating around the media saying that his, his former club Juventus are uh, interested in re-signing him. It did say Juventus would have to offload a couple of their players you know, to fund the move for Paul Pogba. 
But he did say Juventus have been in negotiations there with his agent, uh, Riley Ola. But it's looking likely Real Madrid are going to get him because reports came out the other week saying that uh, reports were coming out from Spain saying that allegedly he'd agreed the personal terms. It said the wages had been agreed and it said he agreed um, around a 10 million a year deal uh, with Real Madrid, uh, Paul Pogba. But maybe Paul Pogba, you know, wants to be playing to the highest level, you know, wants to be up there challenging and winning trophies. And this is what, you know, basically, you know, Paul Pogba may want. It's going to be hard to find someone, it's going to be hard to find an ad adequate replacement, you know, if, if, if someone's Paul Pogba's level. It's going to be hard to find a replacement, you know, of Paul Popper's calibre and level. We, we do know that. But, you know, with £120, £130 million, pounds, you know, we could get two players uh, for that price. So I think it will help us uh, with our transition, you know, ultimately. Um, but as I did say, what's going on uh, with David De Gea? Um, as I said, you know, we've not yet uh, come to an agreement, of course, uh, to get David De Gea um, a new contract um, at Manchester United. Uh, Manchester United um, have been in negotiations um, of getting him a new contract. Um, obviously, uh, David De Gea has been uh, linked uh, with a 90 million mover to PSG. We also do know that Real Madrid have been long admirers um, of David De Gea. But obviously, you know, he's been re recently, you know, making costly errors um, as David De Gea. Uh, but Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has obviously you now confirmed um, in his press conference that he will be uh, playing in, uh, in against Huddersfield and he will be playing um, against Cardiff so basically we'll be playing in these two remaining games after uh, Sergio Romero has sustained um, an knee injury uh, whilst he was training so it will be De Gea <coughs> he will be uh, De Gea you know participating um, in these two uh, remaining games but David De Gea as I said you know he's still potentially you know, one of the best goalkeepers um, in the world you know this is now his eighth season with Manchester United he has made over 300 appearances um, in all competitions as De Gea you know he's won the club's player of the year you know four times out of the last five years as I said he's won everything um, here uh, domestically but if Manchester United cannot come to an agreement to get him a new contract obviously we'll want to cash him from this summer rather than letting go on the free um, in the summer um, of 2020 uh, but recent reports did say that uh, PSG were willing to offer him a £450,000 a week contract that's obviously more than double of what he's currently on at the moment because he's on £200,000 a week at the moment in his current deal uh, with Manchester United but reports came out saying that Man United are willing to offer him £300,000 a week but De Gea reportedly is demanding that he wants around £350,000 a week if he is to commit his long term future with Manchester United and uh, at And uh, sign um, a new contract term as well. So um, if you know if De Gea is to leave uh, this summer, you know obviously you know we're going to need a replacement for him. Um, you know we've emphasised him um, a couple of targets. And you know the other day um, in the media, you know there was a lot of talk to him about uh, Jan um, or Blanc, you know from Atletico Madrid. I just I still don't believe he's in the same calibre or level um, as David De Gea. You know De Gea's 28. You know Jan or Blanc's 26. So Jan or Blanc's actually two years younger than De Gea. Uh, Jan or Blanc has reportedly got a buyout clause um, around 100 million pounds um, in his deal with Atletico Madrid. He's just recently signed um, a new deal with. Atletico Atletico Madrid till 2023 um, and I think he also got a pay rise um, in his buyout clause you know when he did uh, sign uh, this new contract um, I think it's only this season though that um, Liverpool's Allenson has, has, met, has kept as many clean sheets uh, this season um, as Jan Blanc so that just emphasises how impressive you know Jan Blanc is you know Jan Blanc you know doesn't really leak a lot of goals you know he's good at uh, keeping uh, clean sheets and he's a really really good uh, shot stopper is Jan Blanc I think he's now heading into his, his what his sixth season now uh, with Atletico Madrid he's also um, a former uh, Benfica uh, player but yeah they has been um, a lot of talks um, about John O'Blanc saying that Man United are ready to trigger his release clause and that's if De Gea um, of course um, is, to leave, uh, is to leave Manchester United uh, this summer and there's also been talks um, of Jordan Pickford um, in the past so we've emphasised a couple of you know goalkeepers that could replace De Gea if De Gea leaves Manchester United uh, this summer um, but as I did say, we know one player that's definitely leaving, and that's obviously you know Antonio Valencia. Obviously, you know Valencia um, has got um, a calf injury. Well, sorry, you no, know, he's just I think he's just recovered uh, from this calf injury. Uh, should I say because he has uh, been reports going out saying that Valencia you know could participate um, in these two remaining games. I think the last time Valencia played for Manchester United was it back on back in uh, new was it back. In, was it on New Year's Day or just a day after New uh, New Year's Day um, against Newcastle? Because obviously, you know, Valencia's been um, out uh, with a calf injury, but reports said he has returned to training and he could participate um, in these two remaining games. Uh, could um, Antonio Valencia? That's what it uh, basically said. He could participate um, in these uh, two uh, remaining games. But as I did say, he's going to be leaving in the summer. So maybe we should give him at least um, a farewell appearance. You know, this is now his 10th season with Manchester United. Um, Antonio Valencia, you know, he's been here a decade. He's made over 300 other appearances um, in all competitions. But as you all do know, the club opted against the decision, you know, to give him that uh, new one-year um, extension. So he's going to leave when his contract expires um, in the summer. So obviously now we're in search to get a right back. And, you know, we need someone, you know, that can replace Antonio Valencia. Obviously, we need um, an upgrade uh, to Ashley Young um, as well. 
well and Ash Young's another player that should leave this summer and Ash Young needs to be dropped for these two remaining games because Ash Young's now past his sell by date as I said you know he's 33 years of age nearly 34 by the time his new one year extension expires Ash Young you know will be nearly 35 years of age and don't get me wrong he's been here eight years you know I've admired his fantastic career um, over the years he's grown developed and flourished fantastically well but now he's too old he's actually young you know he needs to be dropped he's too easy predictable he loses the ball too easily and uh, yeah he is the problem um, is Ashley Young so he needs to be dropped for these two remaining games and it was bad business from the club you know giving him that new one year um, extension so we do need a potential right back you know Diego Dalla I really really like Diego Dalla you know we got him from Port Hall last summer for around what 19 million pounds was it yeah it was 19 million pounds we got him last summer uh, from Porto but Diego Dalot, you know, still very, very young. He's, what, 19, 20 years of age. You know, he's still in the process um, of developing. So I do believe we still need a cover-up uh, to Diego Dalot. So there has been quite a few right-backs mentioned. You know, Amal Man Pasaka, you know, he's been a prime target for Oligan and Solskjaer. But recent reports have come out um, about Crystal Palace's uh, Amal Man Pasaka. Um, and it's basically said that um, he's committed to Crystal Palace's Amal Man Pasaka. And he's, he's confirmed that he will be at Crystal Palace at least uh, for another season. Um, I think he's valued um, at around £35, £40 million. Pounds. I still think he's got a, like, what, is it three or four years left um, on his deal uh, with Crystal Palace but he's only 21 years of age he's one of England's youngest upcoming talents and I think he's got the ability to elevate Manchester United at least um, in the next two to three years uh, but um, as I said he only broke into the Crystal Palace first team uh, last year and he's gone to like make uh, 40 year senior um, appearances uh, for Crystal Palace but Manchester United have been linked to him but I think he's committed uh, to Crystal Palace as reports say you know there was talks um, the other week um, about Thomas Munier uh, from PSG uh, Thomas Munier you know um, you know, I do really really like him he's an experienced fullback uh, reports are saying that he could be available for around 20, 20 odd million pounds this summer. Um, he's got about 13, 14 months left in his contract with PSG, I think. Um, obviously, he hasn't signed um, a new contract there with PSG, but I think he's uh, predominantly a right back, but he can play in other positions as well, so he is versatile. But he's an experienced uh, full back, um, is Thomas Mooney. And did say the likes of Arsenal and Chelsea uh, were also interested in him. I think now um, this is his third season uh, with PSG, but he did say Manchester United are considering you know, making him um, some move for him. But his defensive abilities are very, very good. You know, he can score goals and he can uh, also uh, provide. So we've looked um, at him, you know, Kieran Trippi got mentioned um, in the media uh, the other week. So we've looked um, at quite um, a few uh, right backs, but we've got um, to get um, a right back in. And that is a uh, very, very essential um, indeed. Um, we need a central defender, you know, someone that can go um, alongside uh, Victor Lindelof um, in our back line, and that's a uh, very, very essential um, indeed. Because uh, Lindelof's really, really improved this season. You know, he struggled in his first season, but Lindelof has really, really improved this season. He stepped up to the plate. His distribution's looking good. His passing's looking good. He's showing that ability that he can play out from the back. So I have been impressed with Victor Lindelof. And mainly, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has been going with the likes of Victor Lindelof and Chris Smalling um, as a centre back partnership. You know, since Smalling, you know, recovered from that long term absence. To be fair to Smalling, he's, de he's demonstrated um, in some of his games, you know, that he can. Now, he's demonstrated in some of his games, you know, that he can play well, Chris Smalling, in some of his games. But for me, um, you know, he's just, he's just no longer good enough, you know, to represent Manchester United as Chris Smalling. And I think it, would, it was bad business from the club, you know, giving Chris Smalling that little long term contract. Also, giving Phil Jones um, that, that long term contract as well, you know, was a big mistake. Uh, Chris Smalling, this is Chris Smalling's ninth season at Manchester United. I think this is Phil Jones's, what, eighth season um, at Manchester United. So, but essentially, I, I think for me, you know, we need to get rid of them um, in the summer. And if a new centre back is to come in this summer, especially, you know, Eric Bay his future you know could be in doubt but I want Eric Bay to leave you know Eric Bay um, is too injury prone too injury prone to be quite honest and I still really really like him he's got great potential Eric Bay um, but you know he's really really found game time very very difficult uh, this season especially since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has come in uh, but he's injury prone Eric Bay you know sustained an injury against Chelsea so now um, he's injured again initially before that um, he just uh, recovered uh, from a concussion um, Eric Bay so um, yeah I think um, he needs to leave um, in the summer because he's too injury prone and he's been at Manchester United over three seasons now obviously Manchester United paid around £30 million pounds for him uh, from Villa Real, but as I said, uh, too um, injury prone. So yeah, we need um, a world class central defender, you know, because we haven't had one since we had the likes of Vidic and Ferdinand. You know, we haven't had um, a world class uh, central defender, so we need someone uh, that can partner um, alongside Victor Lindelof and. Um, we do tend to you know there has been uh, quite um, a few names uh, mentioned and we do know a lot of Manchester United fans would like to see the, the colour Barley's coming or the Rafael Varane's coming and you know but as I, as I did say you know it's going to be hard for us you know to get players uh, to that calibre because we're not going to be in Champions League football for next season and colour Barley's still not impossible you know there's still a possibility you know that Manchester United you know could land him uh, this summer that's if he is for sale and you know Manchester United have got the financial power you know to meet his valuation you know because he's obviously if he is for sale man, he's going to cost Manchester United um, uh, around at least um, £100 million pounds. 
pounds. He's going to cost us um, a world record fee, but he would address our defensive deficiencies fantastically well. You know, he's highly experienced. He's nearly 28 years of age. You know, he's, he's been fantastic in his number of years um, in Italy, you know, with Napoli. I think this is now his fifth season uh, with Napoli. Uh, you know, he's a uh, colour bars. I think he's made over 200 other appearances um, in all competitions. But, you know, financially, you know, I don't think Napoli would be bothered, but financially, they'd make a huge, huge profit on the player because obviously Napoli got him when he was a lot younger. They got him from Jenk, and I think they only paid around £7 million pounds from, uh, from Jenk, you know, when uh, Colour Bali was a lot younger. But he's grown, developed, and flourished, you know, fantastically well. And it would be good for a player of that calibre, you know, to come and experience the Premier League, you know, to see, see how he would fit in. Do you think? I think he'd fit the Manchester United agenda fantastically well. And I think he'd look very, very good um, alongside Vitz Lindelof. But I'd, I don't see us getting Colour Bali, to be quite honest with you. But we, we were linked to him in January. We had three bids turned down. We were linked to him last summer, you know, we didn't come to an agreement to get him. But there's a much cheaper alternative to the likes of the Colour Bars and the Rafael Varane. You know, there's been a lot of talks about Tottenham's Toby Alderweireld and he's available for £25 million this summer and Toby Alderweireld is nowhere near in the same calibre or level as the Colour Bars or the Rafael Varane, you know, the top class central defenders. But Toby Alderweireld, for me, he knows about the Premier League. He's Premier League proven. His, his release cost is £25 million and he's available uh, for a reasonable figure. Uh, I've got reservations about Alderweireld now. I know he's, what, 30 years of age now. You know, he has lost that yard of pace but he's proven himself in his number of years. Um, he has been with Tottenham and I think it just indicates that he doesn't want to be at Tottenham anymore. He, he, he doesn't want to be at Tottenham anymore because he has refused to sign the new contracts and this is why Tottenham activate, activated that 12-month extension and uh, added uh, in, and, in, and uh, included uh, that 25 uh, million uh, release clause. So, um, he could possibly, you know, be one of our first signings, you know, that comes uh, to Manchester United uh, this summer. Uh, Toby um, Arderweireld um, as well. So, lot, there's been a lot, a lot of talks going on about him. But I also think Marcus Rojo is going to be leaving Manchester United this summer. And he's another player. Um, I think um, he's on his uh, way out. You know, he's uh, you know enjoyed um, a very very difficult time at Manchester United um, as Marcus Rojo. So I think he's going to be on his way out. And he's just uh, recently, you know, recovered uh, from long term absence. Doesn't really get the opportunity now anywhere. But he has to stay in there quite um, a few injuries um, as a Manchester United player. Um, I also think Diamond's definitely on his way out um, at the club. I think Manchester United did uh, did trigger that option. Uh, they did trigger them um, that option. You know, I think we uh, we triggered that extension. So I think if we can get rid of him this summer, we can cash. You know, for Matty or I think he would prefer a return uh, back to Italy because when he was younger, he had a lot of experience um, of playing um, in Italy, did Matty or Diamond. And since he's, he's been here since, what, 2015, he hasn't really had the, the opportunity um, at Manchester United, uh, Matty or Diamond. So I can see him going um, in the summer. Um, as I did say, definitely, you know, Sanchez uh, definitely um, on his uh, way out um the club. You know, Alexis Sanchez, you know, has been very, very... um inconsistent um, as a Manchester United player. And recent reports did uh, say that Manchester United uh, may be willing to uh, pay uh, pay um, half of his wages off, you know, so we can sanction Alexis Sanchez off this summer because we do know there ain't going to be many teams out there, you know, that can afford her to pay um, Alexis Sanchez's wages off. And he's obviously he's the highest played player at the club, he's the highest uh, played player um, in the Premier League and he has sustained quite a few injuries as a Manchester United player and he's been inconsistent um, as Alexis Sanchez. For me, when he's been given the opportunity, you know, he just looks so restricted, just looks as though he hasn't been getting that freedom, hasn't settled in and he doesn't have a future at the club anyway because um, he's no longer playing to that highest level. Um, he has lost that yard um, of pace, so we've got to get rid of uh, Sanchez uh, this summer. Um, I think Matter's on his uh, way out um, as well. He's another player that's going, you know, one matter. I like one matter a lot, but he, again, he's no longer playing to the highest level. You know, he's 31 years of age. He's lost that yard of pace. Doesn't even really get in a team now anywhere. But I think he could, you know, participate at least um, in one of, one of these uh, two uh, remaining games because, you know, he put a good, um, impressive performance in um, against Chelsea. Um, Old Trafford, you know, also getting um, his name. Um, on the score sheet but one matter is no longer playing to the highest level and I think Manchester United um, have been in negotiations and getting him a new contract and even if we were to come to an agreement to get him a new contract it'd only be like a one year extension considering now he's 31 years of age um, recent reports came out saying that one matter uh, I think Barcelona sorry um, I've been in talks of getting one matter on a free transfer uh, this summer when one matter's contract expires but it did say um, obviously you know uh, one matter's on around £170,000 a week at Manchester United it did say reportedly one matter would have to take a pay cut on his £170,000 a week wages if he is to make uh, the move uh, to Barcelona but he's been a good servant in the Premier League you know he's been here five years at Manchester United you know when he was younger he had two and a half three good years there uh, with Chelsea but I think he'll want to make a return to Spain you know one matter because he had a lot of experience of playing in Spain when he was young in his prime you know you know he played with he, you know he was at Real Madrid he was at Valencia so he had a lot of experience um, playing um, in Spain but I can see him uh, going um, in the summer um, but yeah two remaining games Manchester United have got I said this uh, all this field uh, tomorrow um, at the Johnson Stadium the last game um, against Cardiff um, at Old Trafford and these are two games you know Manchester United should win I don't think it you know basically matters because I don't think we're going to get in that top four uh, so basically you know Manchester United um, are playing for pride as I did say so maybe we should drop the problematic players and give uh, the youngsters uh, the opportunity uh, Rash, Rashford to me got to, has got to be dropped um, against Huddersfield because he's been in very very uh, poor 
or four members, Marcus Rashford, and he's just sustained um, a shoulder injury, as reports are due. And he has sustained quite a few injuries, you know, most recently as Marcus Rashford, and uh, I think it's taken its toll on him, and it's had a bad effect um, on his game. But um, in the last couple of months, his performances have been way below par, but he hasn't graduated to that level yet, Marcus Rashford. So a lot of United fans, you know, are saying, you know, we should give uh, Mason uh, Greenwood uh, the opportunity. Um, Martial, I think, probably, you know, will play um, in this game against Huddersfield. You know, Martial's performances in the last couple of months have been very, very poor. Um, he was in good form earlier on in the season, but at least in the last couple of months, he's failed to replicate that as Martial. And um, still very, very young, only 23 years of age, but he's still uh, got um, a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him. And I think the likes of Martial and Rashford and that, you know, they're the, the, the short-term problem at the moment, you know, based on their poor run of performances but still are the long term solution it's the same thing with Jesse Lingard he's a short term problem but he's uh, the long term uh, solution um, is uh, Jesse Lingard because Jesse Lingard's 27 years of age you know he's highly experienced you know he should know what it's all about Jesse Lingard but his performances in the last couple of months um, have been very very poor so I don't think he'll start against Huddersfield Jesse Lingard at all um, he didn't even play um, in the Chelsea game uh, Jesse Lingard um, but yeah maybe you know Mason Greenwood you know should be uh, giving her that opportunity um, in that midfield you know I presume it would probably be Pogba, Herrera um, and Fred you know to be quite honest uh, maybe Matic could play but I'd, I think Fred's a better solution um, at the moment than Nemanja Matic um, I don't know if Fred um, is a long-term solution. I don't know if Fred's like got the capabilities to get us to that level. Uh, but I think you know, prior to the Chelsea game, he's proven himself um, in recent weeks um, as Fred. You know, um, he's been supporting the defense very, very well. He's probably more mobile and better on the ball than the Man United um, is Fred. So yeah, I would select Fred um, in that midfield um, against Huddersfield. Uh, I think you know, Bay, obviously we know Bay's injured. I think Jones has uh, got um, a knee injury. Uh, so we have still got quite um, a few injuries. Lukaku, I don't think we'll be playing in these two remaining games um, because obviously he said um, he's got um, a hamstring injury. So it did say he could miss. Uh, the two uh, remaining games but we've got to we should win this game against Huddersfield you know Huddersfield are relegated you know they've only gained uh, 14 points uh, this season obviously they came up to the top flight last season for the first time in like what 45 years um, but they've only gained uh, 14 points uh, this season so these are two games you know Manchester United uh, should win there's nothing to really uh, play for you know we, we're not going to get top four you know we're not in the FA Cup you know we're not in our Champions League so basically you know we're just playing uh, for uh, pride But yeah, um, as I did currently say, so Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, as I did say near the beginning of the video, you know, he did say um, in his press conference, you know, that, that he, he's claimed that he has been contacted uh, by a number of agents, you know, offering their players uh, to Manchester United. So Ole Gunnar Solskjaer said, you know, you'll be surprised how many agents have contacted me saying their players, you know, want to join Manchester United, even if we're not going to be in a Champions League uh, football uh, for next season. So Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to have his says on our transfer plans anyway, you know, what players come in, what players leave. And obviously we've also got to sort, uh, we've also got to sort out um, as well, of course, um, who's going to be uh, the new captain for Manchester United. So there is lots uh, to sort out uh, this summer. So um, anyway, guys, drop your comments, slides below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribing, um, as always, and take care. God bless, and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Thanks for watching, guys.